Hello, my name is Dale Wilhite. I live at French Climber in Mountain Village, Colorado. Uh, if you want to find out anything about me, you can go to MySpace where I have a page. This here concept, and it's about my 64th concept here on YouTube, uh, is about how to reduce uh, convenience store crime and uh, bank robberies, and actually convenience store robberies primarily. One of the reasons why banks and convenience stores and, and businesses uh, per se are so simple to rob, even though getting away with it afterwards is not uh, that easy, is because most people can't see inside these businesses. And thus, you know, uh, a crime can be committed inside, and anybody that's on the outside has no idea what's going on. Let's talk about the convenience store. There was a, an article, or a, actually a uh, news report one time back uh, in the early 2000s about a uh, sheriff in Gainesville, Florida, new sheriff who just got elected, who found a way to reduce the, con the uh, convenience store crime that was running rampant there. I think in 1995 they had something like 88 uh, robberies at convenience stores there. So he decided he wanted to tackle that problem. What he did, he called all the owners of the convenience stores together, rounded them up, had a meeting with them, asked them to put better lighting on at night, take all those stupid uh, posters uh, down off the windows, and have two store clerks from the on the third shift lighting us up. Uh, according to the news report in 1996 or 1997, I, I'm not perfectly sure what year it is. Uh, they had only three robberies. You see, these, conven these convenience stores, you, when they're being robbed, you can be just standing outside the door and not even know it because you can't see anything inside. You know, and that's why these, these convenience stores are so easy to rob because criminals, I mean, for people on the outside can't see what's happening on the inside, especially at night. So they've got to come down. These posters, they, all these posters they put up there is really not a necessity. Most people, when they go to a convenience store, they already know what they want to get. I've never gone to a convenience store and not known what I wanted to buy before I even walked in. If I'm walking along the way or something and see something, then I'll, I'll get it. Uh, but other than that, these posters are not really needed. But that's one way to stop and to reduce a lot of crime. Uh, of course, it's also my belief that, uh, that convenience stores, if they have two clerks on at night, especially late at night and when they're when business is really, really slow, they ought to just do like they did uh, like they did Tupelo, Mississippi, where they actually lock the doors. And then you can come up and you can ask for something, and the second store clerk will go get it for you. And you have to pay everything under a window, and then there's another window where they push all the stuff off, whatever you wanted to buy, uh, to you. But you're not getting inside. That should be done in high crime areas. But unfortunately, it should be done everywhere because of the fact that um, if the criminal element can't rob places, you know, where crime is, you know, where it's a high crime area, they'll just go to places where they least expect it. So you're just putting it from one area and shoving it off to another area. But that's how convenience store crimes can be reduced greatly. And we can save a lot of convenience store clerks' lives. And I don't think any woman should have to work alone on the night shift. I don't give a bleep about this feminist stuff. This is life and death we're talking about here. Um, there should be at least one male on the 11 to 7 shift. That kind of throws a dent in, in the way of a, uh, of a criminal. Because a lot of store clerks are raped that night. Uh, on that 11 to 7 ship. That's a very dangerous ship to work. And it's scary, I'm pretty sure. So, anyhow, that's one of the ways to reduce convenience store crimes. Get those bloody posters off the windows, two store clerk from 11 to 7, and possibly lock the doors in some areas if they can arrange it, and better lighting. Same thing with the banks in, in a certain way, is that banks are so, you can't see anything inside. Everything's all closed up. When I lived in uh, Kalua Kona, Hawaii, I lived there about three times. Uh, the second time I lived there uh, was about three years. First, actually, the first time I lived, lived there was about three years, but it was my second trip to live in uh, Hawaii. Uh, there was a bank down past Kalani Street on the way to what's known as a big Catholic church there before you get to Elihi Drive. And this bank, when you walk by it, you can see everything that's going on. They have, you know, windows that go straight along. You can see the tellers, you can see everything that's going on. And there's a good chance that if it's being robbed, people are going to notice. You know, this person walk up, puts a gun like this, or nope, probably not. But it's, it's just, a, if, if I was going to rob a bank, 
I wouldn't want to rob that one because there's a good chance that if I robbed it, even uh, if I just give them a note or something, that somebody may spot something, somebody may notice something. And it's and when I'm coming out, a lot of people are bound to see me because it's in a very heavily congested area where a lot of people are coming and going. That's why banks are so easy to rob because there's no one, there's they're closed in. And you can rob it on the side and nobody on the outside uh, coming in or walking by or driving by can see it. That's how you got to stop it. The only way technically in America you're going to stop most convenience store crime, most bank robberies, is you're going to have to have a what I call a uh, city, uh, how can I put it? You're going to have to have a control center, a city control center, or like a city uh, video security center, where there are people, and this is not a new idea, this has already been done in some areas of, of America, uh, where you have actually live people who have, are watching videos of certain businesses, and they see everything that's going on inside and just outside the, the store or business. And that's about the only way you're really going to be able to really, really cut crime in America. That would probably have to be a city or state funded uh, uh, crime program. Uh, it would be a great way to cut crime, Europe, but the camera only focuses on what's going on inside the star store, excuse me, or business, and just outside in its area, not anywhere else. Because you know I'm not a big favor or uh, fan of. Uh, more video cameras and video cameras everywhere you go like they have in England. I don't like that. And we don't want people, cameras, you know, scanning, you know, our apartments or homes and stuff like that. That's how out of control it can get. But it's the only way you're really going to cut down on uh, robberies and uh, uh, kidnappings and rapes and things like that is by having a, a city uh, security center that, video security center, I don't know what you'd call it right now, that would has people that will watch, you know, 24 hours these businesses, or maybe at night only. But anyhow, that's the only other way. But until we get to that point, if these businesses could stop closing themselves up and stop making it where nobody can see what's happening on the inside, especially when they're just walking in, crime will go down. Hope you like my idea and uh, and pitch it if you can to anybody who'll listen. Pitch it to your congressional representative and maybe one day it will become a reality because the, it wouldn't be that difficult to implement, at least not with the convenience stores. And hopefully we can save some lives. Thank you for your time.